Hi again. This time we're going to talk about something called polygenic traits and multiple alleles. Um, everything that we've been studying so far has been controlled by pretty much one gene, uh, but in humans it's actually not that easy. Most of our traits are a whole bunch of genes that are working together, so a whole bunch of proteins, because remember a gene equals one protein. So we have one protein that represents our earwax. We have one protein that represents our widow's peak, whether or not we have one. But most of the things that we see on our body are actually controlled by several proteins, several genes working together to express themselves. So that's what we're going to talk about here. So 7-6, polygenic traits and multiple alleles. So a polygenic trait, as you can kind of tell by the word, poly, lots of gen, genes. Hi, cat. <laughs> lots of genes. And so what ends up happening is that you get much more variety. So far everything we've been looking at has either two or three phenotypes. So we either have the dominant, the recessive, or an in-between of some sort. Well, in a polygenic trait, we don't have just two or three choices. We have four, five, a hundred choices. And that's because it's different amounts, excuse me, cat, different amounts of each gene will represent some sort of outcome. So for example, we have eye color here, and this is why eye color is not a simple thing to, to figure out. You know, if mom is brown eyes, dad has blue eyes, why do I have green eyes? Well, once again, it's because of the fact that there are lots of different possible combinations due to the fact that they're all controlled by many, many genes. So here we can see the eye color is represented by both A and B. Now before this kind of looks like a dihybrid cross, but where A meant one trait and B meant another trait. Well, in this one, it's A and B together represent the one trait. Okay, not like, you know, in the SpongeBob, A represent, you know, his square pants, B represented his yellow body. Well, now what you need A and B working together to represent that particular eye color. Now, you kind of solve for them some kind of the same way as dihybrid. As you can see, the big A, little b, big B, little b was foiled to figure out what four different eggs can be made. And then um, the same thing over here. Actually, this is the guy over here, so I guess we'd say the sperm over here. And the girl over here, you know, she's got four different types of eggs. And when we mix them together, look at all the different colors we get. Light blue, deep blue or green, light brown, medium brown, dark brown to black. So both parents have the same identical eye color, but look, now we've got five different possibilities. And this is only caused by two genes. Your skin color, hair color, all that kind of stuff, three, four, five, six genes. So think about what the cross would look like there. You would probably have like eight by eight. You'd probably have 64 squares instead of just a measly little 16 like we have here. So polygenic traits are much, much more difficult to predict the outcome because now instead of foiling you know, big A, little a, big B, little b, big C, little c, big D, little d. How do you foil that? It's hard. There are big scientists can do that. We don't. But imagine that you had a cross with someone with this genotype, cross with someone else with the same genotype. You know, how many different possible combinations could you get out of that? Well, let's see. Uh, I think it would be a 16 by 16 square. Okay, and there's a lot of different color combinations you can get for that. So polygenic traits, like I said, much, much more difficult to figure out because of the fact there's just so much variability in between. You're not either hazel or brown or brown or blue. As you can see, lots of different combinations. Now multiple alleles is another slight variation of how things get inherited. Multiple alleles, kind of like, remember how we said for blood type, we have a big eye that has an A and a big eye that has a B. Well, there's two alleles for the same gene, right? So that's kind of what a multiple allele is. It's a trait that has, that have more than two alleles, <coughs> excuse me, for one particular given gene. Here's a good example of it. It's a rabbit color. So we see we have a dominant big C and we have three little C's. But the little C's, the recessive, come in three different varieties. We have a CH, an H, and nothing. So I can mix these four in many different ways. Now the big C is still dominant to the little C's, but in the, within the little C's, they even have their own little dominant system. The CH, which stands for chinchilla, is dominant over the H, which stands for Himalayan. 
the Himalayan is dominant over the albino. The chinchilla is dominant over the albino. But the big C, the brown fur, is dominant over everybody. Gets confusing, huh? So if I have two big C's together, I'll get a brown bunny rabbit. If I have a big C and a CCH, I'll have a brown bunny rabbit. But if I have a CH and an H, I'll have a chinchilla. If I have an H and a C, I'll have a Himalayan. If I have a CH and a C, I'll have a chinchilla. If I have a big C and a little C, I have a brown. So again, now I'm starting to get much, much more variety in the phenotypes of the offspring. So a multiple allele is I have a dominant and I have a recessive, but there may be more than one form of either. So this one, there's only one, the big C, but the little C, I have three different types. Whereas usually you just have one of each. You have one big and one small. You're done. But in, like in blood timing, typing, the big I has two forms, an A and a B, which can be co-dominant to each other. Now in this one, you'll notice the CH and the H are not co-dominant to each other because the chinchilla overrides the Himalayan. Or else, if this was co-dominant, I'd have a rabbit who's half gray and half Himalayan. Well, that's not the case. So they still exhibit complete dominance, but the difference is, is that I have more than one choice for either the dominant or the recessive. So multiple alleles, what they do is just you have a dominant and a recessive, but you have more than one choice for each. Okay, so that is that one, and I think that's it. So that's it for polygenic and multiple alleles. So as you can see, there's lots of different ways that we inherit genes, and this, which is why trying to figure out what your kids are going to look like is kind of difficult because not everybody follows the same exact pattern. And also, most of our traits are not either or. They're not what uh, we refer to as Mendelian characteristics, where you're either dominant or recessive. But you can be co-dominant. You can be incomplete dominant. You could have polygenic traits. You could have multiple alleles. And so it gets really, really confusing. That's why you're a good blend of both your parents. All right, that's it for today. Bye-bye.